This year, we're going to see a slew of new electric cars hitting the market, ranging from mainstream models to higher-end premium ones. And while Tesla is currently considered the king of both the electric car marketplace and the luxury car marketplace, two models, the Audi e-tron and Porsche Taycan, are poised to try and carve themselves a market share. I'm not going to band about the term Tesla killer because Frankly, the marketplace is more than large enough for multiple luxury plugins to exist together, and there are far more people right now who don't drive an electric car that could make the switch in the next few years than there are people already driving electric cars. And it seems to be the case that people really are ready to switch to electric because both Porsche and Audi both owned by Volkswagen, of course, are already planning increases in production of the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron before each model have officially begun deliveries. Porsche has confirmed that it now plans to produce 40,000 Taycans per year, twice what it originally planned due to overwhelming demand from customers. At the tail end of last year, Porsche disclosed that it had sold out of its original first year allocation of Taycans, noting that it might increase production to keep up with demand. Given that every customer had been asked to put a $2,500 or equivalent deposit down when reserving their car, it means that Porsche already has about $50 million of reservations already secured. Now that Porsche has confirmed a doubling in production and with more of those $2,500 reservations coming in, it shows that demand for a non-Tesla electric car is there. Sadly for Tesla, in Porsche's case, there is a caveat. While Porsche says that more than half of its Taycan customers are first-time Porsche owners and many are coming from rival internal combustion engine brands, like Audi, BMW and Mercedes, it says Tesla customers make up the largest proportion of its new customer acquisitions for the vehicle. This doesn't have to be a bad thing for electric cars, however, since Tesla sales are continuing to rise and cars traded in for Taycan, even if they're Teslas, means more electric cars on the used car marketplace. Overall, however, given Porsche's order books also include Porsche customers and non-electric customers, the effect of that increase in production is fantastic for absolutely everyone. Audi's planned production increase for the e-tron is also great news for electric car fans. Since Audi's increasing e-tron production from 70,000 examples per year at the current time to around 85,000 cars per year from next year. While that's far less than some of its more popular models in terms of production, for example, the Q5, Audi's most popular car, has historically been produced at an average rate of around 280,000 examples per annum, it would put the e-tron well above production figures for many of Audi's models. And for the first all-electric model from the automaker, does seem to suggest Audi is in it for the long run. You just have to think about Tesla's first year production figures for the S, the X and the 3. As with the Taycan, I'm sure there will be crossover between existing Tesla owners and the e-tron, but I'm guessing the lion's share will be made up from existing Audi customers and customers trading in non-Audi, non-Tesla vehicles. What's also worth noting for both these brands and their plans increased in production is that they both offer next generation charging rates. The Porsche Taycan will be compatible with next generation 350 kilowatt charging stations, which will add 62 miles, 100 kilometers of range in just four minutes. Meanwhile, the e-tron will charge at 155 kilowatts from empty to 80% full without any noticeable drop in charge current, meaning it too can add range far more quickly than most electric cars on the market today. Why is this important and what does it have to do with increased production figures? Well, simply put, infrastructure will be driven by demand. And if there are more cars hitting the roads that use non-proprietary, non-Tesla charging networks, all capable of higher power charging, then the charging network providers will have to improve their coverage and the speed of their power transfer rates. And that in turn will encourage other automakers to build faster charging cars, which means less charging time for customers on the road, which should in turn encourage more people to make the switch to electric. Increased production promises from Porsche and Audi also illustrate that the electric car marketplace is growing up 
and electricity is becoming a valid fuel choice for more people than ever before. That might be bad news for those in the fossil fuel industry, but since electric cars get cleaner as they age, because the electricity grid is getting cleaner and cleaner all the time, this should be good news for everyone. Do you have either of these vehicles on reservation? Are you interested in buying them? Or are you waiting for some trickle down of the technology in both of these important cars into more affordable models? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked or didn't like it. Scribble a comment. And if you want to support the show, there are a whole host of links below, as well as that notification bell to help you do just that. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.